Hi, everybody. <clears throat> just let me uh, just check to see if my lighting's okay on YouTube. Okay. I think I'm all good. Um, I'm watching my monitor on uh, StreamYard, so there might be a bit of delay from talk to um, when you write a message in chat. So today we're going to be doing a girl, farm girl, I guess you could say. It could be anybody, really. And she's looking in a field. And i just done a quick drawing. And this can be put into virtually any kind of background or situation. Now, I've just put... A bunch of uh, stems basically showing that she's carrying something so you could set this for any time of year also so there could be uh, spring flowers there could be uh, maybe she's holding a bunch of rhubarb or uh, <laughs> Whatever you want her to hold, basically. She could even be holding a cat if you wanted to. And she's looking into the field. So if you want to have daisies around her or maybe there's a particular crop, maybe you want corn. You could have corn so that you don't have to do a whole lot of the uh, background as a, as a field. You could have it... Hey, Lori, you could have this as a um, tropical scene or even um, lake, that type of thing. Whatever you want to put her in. So have fun with it. Uh, the traceable for this is available for all levels on my YouTube membership and Patreon. So it's already been posted so you can... Download that and play along if you would like. Hey, Brenda. Uh, if you have any problems, sometimes, I don't know why, but sometimes uh, there's a glitch in the uh, downloadable. So don't ignore that. Just uh, leave a message wherever you are downloading it from, like use my me membership on YouTube or Patreon. And uh, I'll get right on it and fix it for you. I know uh, last last time I did, uh, I think it was the girl reading the book, there was a problem with the printable. I'm pretty sure it's okay. I checked it. So hopefully no one has any problems. So I'm going to put this in my file folder. Um, this is a file folder, Constantina, Concertina, I guess you call it, accordion style book, and I'll put the, um, the, uh, covers on later. Actually, I have to leave this side. I just remembered that, um, because I'm now doing the reverse of this, because I've already done six months on the other side. So I have to now do um, this side. So it should be on this part instead. So let's see. I want to put that in between here so it doesn't... get any paint on there. So just let me do that and then we'll start. Come 
it. No, I can't fold it. So. Just go up to this line, I guess. Yeah, it's going to be a cool book. A little different than what I did last uh, year for my file folders. <laughs> I love file folder books. I think they're cool. <clears throat> Great paper to art on. Doesn't matter how much water or wet material you put on. It's it holds up. Doesn't pill at all. It's awesome. So this is just a bit of uh, gesso. So if you're using uh, paper of some sort and it hasn't been treated with gesso or primed in some way, you probably should put uh, at least one layer of gesso on. You can use uh, white gesso. You could use acrylic paint. Um, just as long as you get one coat on. And the reason that is, is because when we start painting, if it hasn't been treated, the paper tends to uh, cause your paintbrush to what they, they call dragging. So it, it loses its um, capability of spreading easily. So if you got a nice coat, and I like to just go over lightly with your brush so we get, get rid of some of those marks from the paintbrush. And it doesn't have to be like, I can still see some of these lines in here, but that's fine. I just want the paper put on enough so that I can have my paint move properly when I'm painting. So I'm going to take my heat gun and dry this. You want to make sure it's good and dry before you put your drawing on. So I hope everybody's having a great day. Hey Jen, I think you're new. I haven't seen you here before. Welcome, welcome. So what are you creating these days? What's on your table? I made two five folder books. Haven't used them yet. I have to remember to get them. Yeah. I now you don't have to just paint right directly on those file folders. A lot of these I have painted on other paper and then just glued it on. So it's more or less like a scrapbook, a place to put your art on. You can either use the paper or glue on to the paper. Always making journals. Awesome. And what type of journals do you make? You, you must have a uh, videos on your channel of what you do. Hey, Jasper. Do you do junk journals or do you do more in the line of art journals, sketching journals? You're not new? Oh, I don't recognize your name. Did you change your name? Or you just haven't chatted. I use printable kits and make junk journals. Awesome. Yeah, junk journals are really big right now. I like I like the looks of them. And what I would like to do with them is uh, white out areas and draw on parts of it. I think that would be really cool. But it's such a great create thing for everyone to do because 
All you need is uh, collect a bunch of stuff from your recycling bin. <laughs> if you don't want to buy anything or download anything, just start collecting newspapers or uh, junk mail boxes from your cereal and you know cracker boxes and stuff like that cutting them down cards uh, bills that type of thing okay so that's well dry now now what i like to do um this is the the sketch So I like to put my background on first before I put this on. And I just kind of scribbled a background showing that um, there's my horizon line right there. So maybe some trees, a bit of sky. Uh, these could be stacks of hay or whatever you want it to be, really. Um, so what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to have her in a field, but this is going to be very, very simplistic, this whole thing. Uh, I know when I, uh, put up that I'm doing a person or a figure or a face, that type of thing, people get a little bit <laughs> nervous. Oh, I'm not going to be able to do it, but believe me, these are very simple, then I pick very simple ones to do. And if you notice, there's no face. She's looking away. And if you love figures in your paintings, but you don't, you kind of shy away from them because you feel you're incapable of making a face that's good enough, try her facing away. You still get the point across. And I, I think it has more mysterious effect to it, too. So it, you're kind of leaving it to the viewer to say, what's she looking at? Why is she in the field? You know, that type of thing. And it, and it kind of gives it a story, the start of a story. And for a real good, successful page or painting has to have a story or an emotion with it for it to be interesting. So I think I'm going to have hmm, kind of a hazy background. So nothing's going to be um, very crisp looking as far as the background. The main focus is going to be on her. So I have just a bunch of craft paint here and the background I'm going to make the sky kind of uh, bluey almost on a purpley side too with the clouds kind of like a maybe a storm coming in let's see did I, I really didn't get any I'll get my blues here um, best blues are Cobalts or uh, let's see. Caribbean blue is a, is a good one. Ocean reef blue. Blue lagoon is another one. Uh, let's see. One French blue. I think we'll do it in. We want purple. Kind of. So if we did a uh, Caribbean blue. And there's a little bit of this color here that's periwinkle blue. So it's a little on the uh, mold side. And I 
actually here's deep periwinkle and some white uh, mine aren't so junky so I think custom journals is a better description but I have some junk oh awesome so you do have a um, channel we can with some videos on it that you've done so we always like finding new places to check out there's quite a few of us have channels with um, videos it's a nice community and new people are always welcome if you want to um, get into chat and let everyone know that you're a channel with videos that would be great uh, I any uh, videos awesome all right I just use lids from coffee containers so this is a Caribbean blue craft paint I just like using craft paint uh, for these types of uh, paintings in a journal because they don't stick to your pages then when you start using artist grade artist grade is shiny and a lot of times when you stick your pages together they'll stick and then you'll end up ripping paint off one of the pa pa papers and then uh, wrecking it so if you use craft paint and the craft paint's very inexpensive so and i like using a lot of uh colored pencil on top of mine and the craft paint is a matte so i like to be able to put some kind of if i decide to uh color pencil on top all right so i have the blue i'm gonna get a little bit of a smaller brush here so i have this is a half inch. Um, I'm on Kara Brendan design team and Tess Roses design team. So, oh, wow. Oh, I'll have to take a look at that then. Awesome. Thanks for letting us know. So it's always a lighter bluish well unless it's storming then it's a little different but so i'm going to take some of this blue and a little bit of this white mix it together just make it a little bit lighter and i'm going to start just by putting some of this light color on the horizon or not horizon well it is kind of the horizon but on this part and then as I go down, you can add a little bit of the pure color. And then I'm going to mix some of this periwinkle deep, I think it's called. And a little bit of the white can go in there. More. it's kind of going to be just a bit of a hazy look to it i'm going to take some of this um ocean reef blue it's a little bit darker i think it's almost done well, maybe it is done Let's see if i can just need a smidge smidge of that color and I'm not worried about um, brush marks all that much so it's gonna be kind of a um, impressionistic way of painting, I guess you could say. I'm 
Just mixing up the colors. And then just a little bit more purple on the bottom here. I'm just going to crisscross a bit. And then I'm going to take a little of that white. Take this up a little bit lighter in here. Just play with it until you like it. Okay. I'm going to let that dry. We can dry it with a heat gun. So now I'm going to put uh, trees, like background trees. So what I like to do, and what most people do when they're using acrylic paint, is you work from back to front. So you always start off with your distant uh, sky, mountains, whatever it is you're doing, and work your way to the front of the painting. Now I'm going to get a, probably a, a little bit of a stiffer brush. So I have a, a bristle brush here. And this is a Curry's brand. It's a Canadian brand. And uh, let's see. I'm going to put these aside for a moment. Take another palette out. And I'm going to get some green. So I want a fairly dark green. So I have uh, evergreen here. And I also want maybe a little bit of charcoal color. So I have uh, just charcoal, it's called. A little bit of that. I'm just going to put the lid back on this in case I... And now I want to make the distant trees. So they're not going to be really in focus. Like I said, the background is kind of be represented as impressionistic. So kind of um, expressive brush marks that your mind's eye will tell you, yes, those are background trees or those are pines or that's a maple or whatever, but it's not actually very fine detail. So we have a little of this evergreen. And I'm gonna take some white also. I'm just mixed a little bit of gray with that just to make it even duller. And right on the edge here going into the sky, I'm just going to dab in and I might even just put in a bunch of um, darker colors over this. And I'm just dabbing. So let's put a little of this. Mix it in there. Make it a little darker. Just keep, it doesn't have to be all the same color either. You can mix it up. Okay. 
Okay, and then up here, it's kind of, I'm just doing a bunch of brush marks. So I know there's a big tree behind here that I want. And you'll see some of the sky, but not all of it. There's going to be a lot of shadowed areas in this area because of the tree. You're looking into the tree, basically. So we want some of that to be fairly dark. Okay. So nothing crazy as far as detail. Just a bunch of marks. You could also use a sponge to do that if you wanted to. I just want paper towel to get as much of the water off my brush. Now we want a little bit of a difference in the color. So I'm going to add, I have some celery green here. Now you could add some yellow to that if you wanted to. If you don't have celery green, you can make your own greens up. And I'm gonna add a little. Where did I put that? I'm gonna actually scoop this white on here. Okay. So we use it up. Just add a little bit of that celery green. It's a really light, light color. And we'll just throw some of that on. Little bushes here and there. Like I said, it's just to represent layers of, of leaves and whatever. It'll be fairly dark down here, so I'm going to put a little bit of that gray with that green. Just throw some in here. Because that would be the shadowed area. Maybe a little bit in here. Now let's dry that. My mom is an oil painter. Oh, awesome. Come on, tear up random design team. That's one thing I haven't ventured into yet. <laughs> but I would love to try it, but I haven't done it yet. I do have a bunch of oil paint. <laughs> so it's there. I just haven't. All right, so let's get out, just for the fun of it, some of these. These are all so awesome to use because you can crunch, crunch them up into different shapes. So it gives you a different pattern. Um, so you can get some of these. They're, I use them quite a bit in my work. So let's put in, and they, they give you a really interesting um, stamp.
you can just keep doing all kinds of stuff with it. Make it look the way you want. A little bit of dark on the bottom. Okay. And it's quick. So we can dry that up. Yes, I do. It's Kathy Arbor also on Instagram. Hey, Sherry. Now, we want to put in, uh, I'm going to do hay, basically. And this is very, very simple to do. So you're going to get into antique golds. Um, raw sienna, burnt sienna, that type, those types of colors. So you can get, uh, this is raw sienna. This is burnt umber. And... Let's put, guys, we'll put it on this one here. And some, uh, I'm going to get some buff color or, or a, uh, sorry, can't do stuff, two things at once. Um, parchment color so this one's parchment or buff would be another one you could you could use oh, this one's not even been open let's see this one's sand there's many many ones you could use. And I've got my bristle brush again. And this is basically just a bunch of crisscrosses and just throw on a bunch of color. You want brush marks showing. And just keep playing with it until you like it. There's no real defined areas. It's just going to be uh, a bunch of, of shades of uh, colors you would see in a hay field. So like I said, this is very easy one to do. You can paint over certain areas. I'm just brushing up into the tree there because maybe the hay, hay is... Uh, A little taller there. Maybe it gets darker underneath, so it would be a little darker under there. So let's put some of that in. Maybe some of this. 
it's going to change color. And you do have areas where um, if it's wheat, then maybe it got trampled or the wind came. Sometimes wheat gets uh, blown over. All the farmers hate that when that happens. But you want lots and lots of different layers and don't make them in a row. Kind of um, just go all over the place. Maybe there's areas that are a little darker. Maybe there's something in there. I don't know. Just play with it. Now, this area, her body's going to be in there, most of it. So I'm not too worried about that area. But it, what is in there, because it's going to be painted over top. So just uh, take a look in the mirror, just bring it up to your mirror and take a look at it. Sometimes that helps if you're not sure if you like it or not. It gives you a different perspective. Uh, maybe it needs some more shading or just play with it. Um, then to give it distance, you might want to make the brush marks a little shorter on the top here. So you could just do that in the little areas. You can either copy the color that's already there or Use a sponge, maybe. Just try different things. This is, I'm doing mine for the my um, book. So it's a journal. If you're planning on doing this for, let's say, painting, I would suggest doing it in a journal first. And then venture into a canvas. That way you're not going to get disappointed if something doesn't work out because you can work it out first in your books. So I'm going to put a little mound, I think. Maybe it's a hay mound. Can have little I don't know little rocks even if you wanted to or you could even actually do like that the big round things of, of hay and then just uh, just 
still put a little bit of hay around it or so it wouldn't be totally seen might have a little bit of um, and sometimes they're a little different color might have a little green in it if it's not completely dry hay sometimes they're there's have this green tinge to them. Um, you know, depend, they're tall too. So depending on how you're viewing this, uh, you might have a little bit of a lighter color on the top here. That. Hey, Judy. And then maybe a little bit of shadow in here. Hang on, how the sun's shining. A bit darker right underneath it. Around here, or flat. It's got a nicer edge on it. Okay, let's put these aside for a minute and dry that. Now we'll put other more detailed stuff up front once we have the girl put on. put her on and I do have a tissue paper one that I drew and this way I can position it in the way I want so let's see do we want her over like that so that the, yeah I think I'm going to put it like that because then I can have the uh, bales of hay showing I don't know if they're called bales what are they called rolls <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, so she's going to go there. So then I can tape that down. Just so that I know where I want it. And then I'll put the um, tracing paper underneath. which is so this is the gray one and I'm just going to put it under there hopefully 
we it comes up and get a ballpoint pen. And just I'm just going to put in more or less just the outline of of her. I'm not going to get too detailed with the hair even. Uh, keep a reference when you start painting of your drawing. That way, when you start doing the hair or something that's got a lot of detail in it, then you've got that to refer to. So, let's see, how did I do that? This comes down. Like this, that's her chin, there's her neck, and this is just shading, sh showing where the uh, neckline and uh, the shade on her, her neck and her chin are. And then her hair, I made curly hair, you can make your, her hair whatever you want, if you want it in braids you could do that. This is just a sample of, of what you can do. Change it up if you want. Um, so she's looking away. And then her hair kind of sweeps in front of her too. I have kind of curls coming down. Um, there's her shoulder, and I didn't bring her arms all in there too much. Now you can. Uh, I just have a bunch of flowers that are going to be basically covering most of that arm up. So if you want, you can put it in. Now the fingers kind of look funny. This is her thumb here. Oh, it doesn't seem to want to write on this. And then her index fingers right there. And then it's kind of like this, <laughs> but you're viewing it from in front. And then her, she's holding whatever it is. You can decide what you want her to be holding. And I'm just going to put basically a few lines in just to show where some of this stuff goes to. So I know I don't have to worry too much about putting in details as far as her arm and stuff like that. And her jeans, like that. Pocket. You can put all the details in later if you want. You can make fancy pockets and Whatever. Um, I think that's all I need. Yep. Good. Came through. So there's my base drawing. So now I'm going to want... Um, a little bit of a smaller brush when I need it. I like using a flat or angle brushes. Angled if you have one are really great because then you can use them as for tips, the tip of it as um, when you need a real detail. 
pieces I got on here. That one should work. Like always, isn't it always the way when you want something, you can never find it? <laughs> Here's one here. This is a quarter. I don't know why they say it. That looks more like a half inch to me, but it says quarter. Um, so, hey, you thought. So we're going to paint her hair in first and you can decide what you want to do. I'm going to make her kind of an auburn brunette color. Um, and the face, the sun is facing, so she's looking into the sun. So the edges of her hair, so all this part here, is going to be lit by the sun. The front part of his here going over her shoulder a little bit will be light. And all the um, curls down here on the top part of it will be lighter. And then just around in the neck area, it'll be darker. And then this all along the back of her head is going to be a lot darker. So it's kind of like a silhouette. When you're looking into the sun and you're behind somebody, whatever is in front of you blocking the sun is usually really dark. And you don't see as much detail. So we're going to use uh, what I have here is uh, burnt umber. So we're going to use a burnt umber to start off with. And that'll be in the center of her head, basically. And you can bring it up into her top of her head there. You might need a couple coats depending on your, your paint. Some paints are a little thicker than others. Um, brings it down into here. And the back of her hair here over her shoulder, that's all going to be fairly dark. There might be a little bit of highlight, but mostly dark. More, more on the auburn side is what we'll do. But I'm just going to rough it in, base coat it in. You can use the, make some curls if you want on the very bottom. Um, it'll get a little lighter down here, I think. And a little bit more in there and then I'm going to add this uh, raw sienna color I think this was raw sienna I didn't clean my brush and I'm just going to start putting that along the edge here Trying to see where and we could add a little bit of that. Where is it? This color was sand. So we can add a little bit of that as we go in here on the very front of her head. It'll be a little lighter. 
And I'm just using the tip of my brush. And she kind of has these tendrils falling down on her face here. You can mix a little bit of the raw sienna with it. And then on her shoulder here, by her face, there's more of the curls coming on her shoulder. And that can be almost white. And then a little bit of the green, or not green, raw sienna color as you go in towards the neck. It's a little more on the red side. And darker along the neck. Right in here. You can use a um, smaller brush if you want. Let's see. Uh, script liner. If you got a shorter one than that, that would be great. Just a little easier to put the uh, curls in. Might need to go a little, even a little darker. Let's see. Uh, there is, um, I would love to show you some book. I'm going to put a little bit of that sand color in the white here. I'm going to make it really pale. I want a little bit on the milky side consistency. And then I'm going to just uh, do some of these really um, bright areas that she would have. Actually, maybe even, let's see if I got a smaller brush. That one's smaller, maybe. I could even go with a grainer brush. Let's see if this works. This is a grainer brush. So it kind of gives you a little bit of hairy look to it. I think I like the smaller brush better. Where did I put that? I don't have a, maybe this one will work. Let's see. 
a little bit shorter. Let's see if we can get some nice play back and forth with colors. Most red in here. I'll take that off. Kind of have to play so you like what you got. I think I need a little bit of contrast in here. I'm putting some more brown back in. Switching back. And then some gold. And as it goes back here, get more into the um, reddish tones. I can take, let's see. This brush is a uh, greener brush. More of the good. I just want a little bit of hint. on the top here a bit. A 
Lewis Brown. Even just a little bit of wisps of that brown going into the Okay, and where this? Oop, too much water. Yeah, everybody's been saying that dot. They're not getting their notifications on time. I guess there's just. I'm not big enough of a channel to be that important. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. And it's actually probably a little bit because her hair is fairly long on this side, so I'm going to have to make it the same on this side. So let's bring this down a little bit. So depending on the colors you've put on your field, you'll have to adjust those colors to make them either lighter or darker with your hair. Too much. few curls in there. Too much water on my brush. Got to make sure you have the right consistency. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you say so, Dot. All right, so we're going to make her skin tone here. It's almost the color, it's very similar to the color of her light parts of her skin there, but uh, let's. I've got some of this sand color. I'll put some of that on and a touch of the sienna, or rock sienna, sorry. Mix that in there, give it a little bit more fleshy tone. So 
this goes very close to the I might have to go back over some of this with um, her hair. So just putting a base coat on. That's that's fairly dark in there. And she's got short sleeves on. So I'll just put this on here. Lower that. And I'll take it into where the whatever she's holding. Just so that I don't have to worry about if there's an area that doesn't have paint on it around her skin. But most of this will be um, painted on with flowers or whatever it is you want to put. A little shade in her different parts of her arm and hand here in a minute. Just putting a base coat on. A little bit on her neck, a little second coat on her neck. It's not quite dark enough yet. Or shouldn't say dark enough. Opaque enough. I can still see some of my background. And on her face here. Now we'll just go back over with some marker with her face. Right. Could put a little bit of white now with that make it a little bit brighter. And where her cheek is. Make that a little bit lighter. And the front part of her face there could be lighter. And then in her under her chin along the front part of her neck is lighter. And then go down her neck. And just up. Her shoulder. But leave that area a little bit of uh, darker. And her, you can do the same for her arm. So this part, top part of her arm. Bring it down like that, and then on the top of her thumb, and down the side of her finger a little bit, and just across this part of her hand. 
not much. I know it kind of looks funny, but it's just the way she's holding the bouquet. All right, and then the bring that yellow back in. And just painting along the side where the light highlights were, just to soften those areas a little bit. You don't want a hard edge. You kind of want to have it slowly integra integrated into each other. Now you can t also take a little bit of that sienna color. So I just added a little bit of the sienna. And then you can just put a little bit of that along her neck here where there'd be a bit of a shadow. And right in here on her cheek and under her chin. And I'm just going to put a little bit on the one part of her face right here. Be a little bit darker there. We'll put um, a little bit darker color more on the red side, or you can add a little bit. Do I have red in here? Oh, I gotta get it red. Okay, I've got here Adobe Red. So it's, it's not a red red, it's kind of um, pinky red, I guess you could say. Or a dusty rose, dark dusty rose red. And I'm going to mix that with my flesh color. And just going to start putting maybe a little, want it a little different color here on her face. So it's a little more on the pinky side. Going, just make sure you have enough of a difference to see it. I think she needed just a little bit of pink in her instead of that. Now it kind of looks funny there, but there's going to be hair going over top of that. But um, then a little bit of the darker pink right in here. Under her chin. And add a little bit of white to it. So 
So lighten it just a smidge. Uh, and that can be her shadow color too. Okay, a little bit of white now. Lighten it. And then the real bright brights are right there by your neck. And then kind of down in the center here. And then goes up onto her shoulder. And you can do the same with her face. There's a, a kind of a glow here. Like that. I'm going to take a little bit of that pinky. Just do the arm that way, that way too. It just, not quite the color I want it to. So if you have um, Santa, was it Santa Splash or something? You could use that too. And a little bit darker on the back side. And mix a little bit of umber with that. A little darker. And same with that. I'm using that same mix of pinky. Just in those areas where you see it the most, you can put some pink skin tone. Remember, there's going to be a lot of leaves and flowers covering a lot of this, so don't get too caught up in it. As I start messing with it. <laughs> I know, terrible. I start seeing things and uh, I bet I could do this. And I start playing with things. Just want a little darker there. It's against her hair. It's darker in there. a little better. Tom's um, Hey Colleen. Hope you're feeling well. I hear you haven't been feeling that great. Is that why you, you weren't on today? Missed ya.
darker in there where it's a little bit. You could use um, colored pencil too if you want these small areas. You know it can get kind of hard figuring out where everything is. Oh, Kathy B has been shopping, playing hooky. <laughs> I'll feel better if you know what it's like. You're not up to par. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit darker in here under her arm here just because it would be shadowed. So I'm just adding a little bit of umber to that mix. I'm gonna have to let it dry. Okay, so while that's drying, I can put a few more of those tendrils falling on her face. With this color. Just so that it looks a little better. Almost an orange, kind of wanting that. I have an orange color, maybe. I don't like that. A little bit of orange. Let's see. An auburn shade.
know if you can see that or not. Okay. Ooh, that looks green. Okay. I don't want green here. much water. All right, let's get on to the top. Hmm. I th what color shirt should we have? We'll have blue jeans, but what color shirt should we have? White? If it's white, then we need a little bit of a brown, or a, um, there we go. A little more on the bluey side. So just a smidge, just dull it down a little bit. And then we'll go in and uh, I'm going to go into the flowers or whatever she's going to be holding. And take a smaller brush for the small areas. So remember, the, the flowers are going to cover most of her arm there. So we're not too worried about making it proper color. We'll darken it back here. Her... Uh, Uh, okay, 
And I want to darken it a little bit more, but I'm going to add some of that gray I had here. And a little bit of blue. And remember, the sun is shining on her this way, so she's facing the sun. gray. Make it a little darker. Right in here. Because the sun would, or her hair would be covering that. And right in here should be darker. And the back of her shirt should be really dark. And right in here, actually, I think I might need to maybe not. Yeah, might have to. See what we get when we put some white in. So the white should be here on our chest. Let's dry it. By the way, I am pre... Awesome, Devin. Now I can get the white on my brush and the top of her shoulder here be white. That. Some more of that gray. Right in here. Mm, that's a bit dark.
that. I can put some hair on. All right. On her um, shirt. Uh, let's see. That's a long one. All right, then let's do her jeans. So we want a blue jean color. So let's see. I think I have some here it's called blue jean. Let's see. Slate blue or very blue. Denim blue. <laughs> I knew I had one. We may as well use our big brush. Base coat on. Any of the belt loops can de be done with a smaller brush. Mm. That bluish color. That I had the pink belt. Had a little spot there that needed to be done. Okay, let's dry that and then we can put high and low lights. So 
I've got a bristle brush here. And I'm going to add a little bit of that gray to this blue mix. Make a darker color. And actually, I think I'll use my flat. So I'm just going to take the side of my flat brush and add colors. And let's go along the edge. Here comes Chloe. She's just along the back of the lake. But I want it fairly thick because remember the the uh, light source is coming at her so kind of at the side so this part of her leg would probably be a little darker And a little bit of that gray, a charcoal gray to my brush. A little bit more water on there. Just under her arm, too, can add a little bit of a shadow. That. Maybe a little bit more on it by her leg here. Actually, that makes her leg kind of big, so I'm going to move that over a little bit. All right. Then, with my bristle brush, let's see. I'm going to have to dry this first because I want to do some dry brushing next. guys are fun. Yeah, wouldn't that be great? So a little bit of that. Oh, I was going to use my, where to put it? Bristle brush. Because I want to see the uh, Still got too much water in it. Got to make sure your brush is fairly dried up or it doesn't work properly. Maybe a little more. She'd have.
Okay. Now, we'll dry that. And now we're going to get out some um, colored pencil. So I just want to make some marks with, let's see, this is a Prisma Cloud Blue. So you can just add a little bit more rough her pants especially um, right around this area along the, the side where the Sun would be shining it would be a lot more lighter uh, I'm gonna put a line down where her zipper would be and Sometimes you you notice the, um, the seam along your leg kind of after you've had them for a while, they kind of go in and out, bumpy almost in a way. And let's see, and then I need a fairly dark color, even black would do. Let's see. Sharpen it. Let's see if it'll work. Nope, nope. Where's my other sharpener? Just along the inside here, be darker, and along the where her seam and the, her pants would be, be a little darker. Darkest areas. And then I'm going to get a, a dark blue. Maybe even an indigo would be good. Um, let's see what I got here. Just color in. A little bit with the indigo. Under here. Just where her hands would be. Um, actually, this might be a little bit more worn in here. You'd be putting your hand in so it wears down the Then 
and maybe a rivets. You can make them as detailed as you want. It's up to you. Okay, now I'm going to keep these out so I know what I used. Now let's do the, um, uh, the, what am I going to do? Daisies or wheat? What should I do? You name it. <laughs> They're both easy to do. You vote daisies? All right, let's see. Got some green here, daisies. All right, we'll do daisies then. Some dark green. So it's two shades of green. This one's kind of chunky. And let's do my other script brush, I think. And even some lighter green. Just mix it up. You could use um, Poscas too. Now the daisies would have, um, especially the bigger date, like the wild daisies, they're kind of, they have long stems. Um, let's get some 
uh, yellow or gold maybe, or maybe this color here. Let's lighten it a little bit. Some of the leaves, or could go yellow too. Just make it a little bit different. I'm not worried about um, if it looks botanically correct. I just want some foliage on here. She's just picked a bunch of field daisies that were laying in the field or in the ditch. And then we can take a shorter round, take some white here, and just make some A lot of times the these you see on the in the field they're they're not as big a flower. And of course they would be not facing you because they're laying along her uh, arm. So most of them would be facing behind her. You might get a few that have um Faced on, but not many. And then we can go in with a colored pencil if you want. We'll let those dry and while that's drying I'm gonna make a few wisps of grass and this is a um, wheat field so um, let's put Fairly watered down. And almost, could almost go. Let's do that. Because it's a wheat field, they would have um, had their hay, or not wheat hay field, because they made their rolls of, of hay. And you can have a little bit of green in there too. Sometimes they there would be a little bit of green left. We can make some pockets here and there. And 
I'm not going to get too um, detailed, I guess you could say. Just want to have an indication that that's where, that's where she is. She's in a field. More of that. Maybe some sienna color. I'll put it over here. Lots of water. Just mix them, mix the colors up so you're, they're not all the same. And then I'm going to add a few green areas where the daisies would have been. So she's picked a bunch of them. And we'll throw in some daisies in the field also by her. And where's that brush? I'm going to just do some flicks with this grainer also, maybe. Just a few. In there. Make it a little rougher looking. And let's dry that. Devin, have a good walk. All right, so now let's do a little bit more detailing. I'm gonna put this aside for me. And let's see, we got a green would match. Mm. That should do. I'm just gonna put some thinner lines in here. It's a little bit different. Um, just showing that there's finer detail.
I can go across some of your flowers too. And then take a paint marker. And let's see. And make some yellow centers in the flowers. So not all of them, just a few. Or you might see some of those centers. Just putting a couple in. Okay. That. I can add some more make them in bunches when you're doing this type of work because it looks very unnatural when um, they're kind of evenly spaced. Let's see, Maybe brown or gold color. Let's see. Let's try this one. Yeah, that works. Oh, and, so, and they also sometimes you find um, broken. They're not all standing up straight. Sometimes they're bur they're they fall over. They're broken. Um, we could also put some of uh, the rounded. marks you'd see in that. Just make it and then some bright white. Let's see. White. Where's my white? On. Oh, that had some black on it. Oh, well. And I guess I could put a few daisies on the white. I'm just going to use the back of my brush here. Just put a few in. Doesn't have to be anything. And take a dark color, black or dark brown. Probably a dark brown. And just add some limbs in the trees here. Sometimes that just gives it enough 
a little bit more realistic um, look to your trees. Doesn't take much. Put a little bit more in my so they're not so weird types of <laughs> just play this is how you learn little things how to add stuff to your backgrounds without a whole lot of work Um, what else? Also add a little bit on their hair. Wait. Uh, let's see. Let's fix this thumb up a little bit. Hmm. Can't get this to look right. I think it needs to be brought down. Looks like her thumb needs to come across in here. take much for uh, needs to come across here a 
more. You could cover it up too. If you can't get it right, just cover it up with some uh, petals or something or leaves. So it's a difficult one to get right. But I think that's good. All right. I think I got it. <laughs> like I said, if you if you can't get the the uh, thumb thumb and the finger right, just cover it up with uh, something a leaf. So I think I just it doesn't take much for it to be off. <laughs> yeah, I'm not putting in the knuckle right. Huh. One of oh. All right, so I'm going to let you guys go and I hope you give this a try. And like I said, cover it up with whatever. You could have her holding a cat. You could put her in a on a ship, a boat, whatever. Just play with it. Have fun with it. So today is the 18th. So 8, 18, 22. All right. So I'll let you guys go, and um, for all the blooming artists and budding artists, I will have a video up for you tomorrow. Um, it should be up by 6, 6 p.m., if not sooner. Uh, depends how quick the internet is working. <laughs> and um, I will have a printable ready for you with that too. So check your um, members community page. Um, I'll probably have it up by tomorrow morning for that. All right. And uh, otherwise, have a fantastic day and uh, get your sketchbook out and be creative. Have a good one, everyone.